which are responsible for the emails between Barclays uh, employees and traders from other banks reveal a certain culture operating within the city. Let's have a closer look at this. Uh, we can speak to a former city boy and a city girl. Uh, Geraint Anderson worked in the city for 12 years, now writes about his experiences. His latest book on bad behaviour by bankers, Payback Time, came out last week. And uh, Polly Courtney was an investment uh, banking analyst before she left and recorded her experiences in her book, uh, Golden Handcuffs. Geraint, if I can start with you, the emails and texts reveal a full complicity between bankers and the submitters. Are you shocked by that? No, not at all. Um, you don't go into the city to make the world a better place. You don't go there to fulfill your creative ambitions. You go there to make money. And it, it both attracts uh, highly competitive people who refuse to lose and want to, to win at any cost. And I'm afraid during my 12-year career, I saw the city become ever more fast and loose, as we used to call it. And in fact, this kind of market manipulation doesn't surprise me at all. I saw it on a smaller scale all the time. People pumping up stock prices by claiming the company was about to be acquired and then selling their stock. People um, doing what's called a bear raid, whereby you, you say a company's about to go bust and then you, you've sold sort short the shares. These are just forms of manipulation. In a highly competitive world, this is how you make money. But Polly, when you look at the emails, and they are so open, it almost sounds as if these guys and girls were, were operating with a belief of total impunity. Despite all the, the, all, all the regulation, they didn't think they were yes. ever going to get caught. No, they can do no wrong. That seems to be the implication. And you say guys and girls, and I have to say the majority are guys, and that's just the way it is, and that's um, part of the issue with the culture in the city. It's all about greed. Everything, everything you do is all about, ultimately, bigging up your bonus for the, net, for the end of the year. And so if that means doing something that's morally wrong or illegal in this case, people will do it. And so, 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 so in other words, the people responsible for this would have known that this was, this, this was wrong. Absolutely, yeah, you can see stroke, them. Stroke illegal. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, they were foolish to have done it because they know they should know that every email and every phone call they make is recorded and, and they should be accountable for everything. In fact, on our training, I remember the phrase that we were taught, which was, don't do anything or say anything that you don't want splashed across the New York Times tomorrow. Obviously, they forgot that advice. But you know the fact, the fact is they did it, and not just one person did it. It wasn't a, an, an isolated incident or one one bank even. It, it was it's collusion across the whole industry. And Geraint, I mean, senior executives claim in this case in one bank that they know nothing about it. So let's not talk about specific names. But but would teams have had to have referred up by doing something like this? It's like anything. You you uh, uh, the culture will be one of semi-criminal behaviour, bending rules and so forth, only if you think you can get away with it. And that comes about through, I think, three things. One, you think that the regulators aren't to be taken seriously. Two, you think compliance and risk controls are lax and you can get by them. And three, dare I say, you might even think that your bosses will turn a blind eye if it makes sure that the quarterly earnings figures come in nicely for the shareholders. So it really is a, question, a very simple question of this. If you have clever, greedy, ruthless people and there is a system that is open to abuse, they will find a way of abusing it to line their own pockets. And I'm afraid this whole terrifying uh, event uh, it just reveals that this is what happens in the city quite regularly. Well, you did it for 12 years. I don't know how many years you were doing Less it for. Less than two. I got out very quickly. All, all right. And you were a market analyst. Yes. So you would have understood about ramping up share prices and things like that. I mean, just in terms of the culture there, how do you change that? Because one, one person was, uh, was quoted today saying that actually these city guys, you know, a lot of them, and I, I know a few, obviously, you know, still in touch with them, you know, they know the price of a, uh, a Jeroboam of uh, champagne, yeah. but they have no idea yeah. about no normal life. No. I mean, is, is, is that true? That's absolutely true. And the the only way you can change the culture is to get different sorts of, a different sort of person going into the city. And until you change that, then it will just perpetuate. But as Gerard says, if, if it's all about making money, you mm -hmm. need to have that very hard-nosed, very aggressive street. Don't you, you do. In other nations, you don't see this to, some, to, to quite an extent. I think the materialistic society and the kind of um, competitive nature of, um, of the type of person driven to go into the city, they all kind of, they all, um, they're all interlinked. And that's, that's the type of person that will will do, will go as far as it takes to get, you know, the biggest bonus. Ger just... Geraint, uh, Ed Miliband today said that there should be criminal proceedings. Would that be a deterrent? Absolutely. Look, look in the city, 24-7, every one of us was assessing risk and reward. So if the risk of being caught is negligible, if the risk when you are caught, the punishment is not anything to be taken too, too worrying, and the rewards are massive, 
then we are going to continue doing those naughty things. We will be doing insider trading. We will be doing things like um, market manipulation. I think people have to be personally accountable. And what's worrying about this latest episode is that those people involved in this, those guys sending those extraordinary emails, which I'm sure shocked the, the general public, I think they're probably going to get away scot-free or relatively scot-free, which is going to be a real disappointment to the general public, I think. How much did you get away with scot-free? Me? I, well, I tell you, if I'd wanted to, I could have made a lot more money than I did. Towards the end of my career, I had people clearly asking and offering inside information, which was something that never happened when I started in 1996. Um, every time we were involved in a corporate deal, I would be get called on the mobile. You know, it, it would be saying, OK, tell us the real story. And because people have such a huge incentive to, to, to make sure that they look like they're making money for their bank or for their hedge funds, they're willing to break rules every time. And it, it's something that got quite, quite disgusting, actually. OK. Uh, Garrett Anderson and Polly Courtney, thank you both very much. Uh,